I think for young players, we really have a couple kinds of articulations that you'll want to be listening for um, in terms of problems. First of all is the one that's most obvious, and it's the kid that overtongues or tongues too low. Now, the sound of this is something like, I'll play uh, part of a B-flat scale for you. Now, you're going to have a kid that can splat out notes like that and will have no problem with it, but you on the podium will definitely have a problem with it. And the thing to think about with this is it's not so much that they're playing too loud. Don't discourage the full sound. You want to always encourage. This kid might be a great player. He's just hidden behind this over-articulated tongue. What I just did is I did two things. I tongued too low, actually between the teeth, so that the air is stopping each time. Number two, I used a large part of the tongue to do it. So if, again, my trombone here represents my tongue, instead of using just the tip down here, I'm using this entire part as if I'm saying, da, 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 da. And you can say that for yourself real quick, and you'll see how much of your tongue you use. In actuality, it's the middle part of your tip of the tongue that's doing the articulating, and the rest of it's coming out between the teeth. Again, <laughs> is the sound it'll get. Easy, easy solution. You just got to get your, your student to A, move their tongue up a little further, and B, use less of the tongue. So we need to think about using a syllable again. So the word ta is a good one, but if this student, because of the way their tongue is formed, ends up tonguing between the teeth with ta, find a different sound that gets a hard front to it. And believe it or not, sometimes the legato da actually makes a pretty good staccato tongue for some players because of how their tongue is put together. But just sort of explore a little bit with yourself using different kinds of words to get uh, articulation that moves that tongue up a little higher for you. So I sometimes use da, I sometimes just change the vowel sound instead of ah, I'll use e or I'll use o, a, do, de, any kind of word you can use that gets that tongue to shift around a little bit. Just sort of play it by ear. You're going to know right away if you've made the wrong guess about how they need to articulate because it's going to get worse. So you want to just keep exploring until you find the, the right place. Either way, where the tongue should strike for about 80% of the middle school graders' uh, repertoire is going to be at the gum line or at the very top of the, the top teeth. It's not going to come through the teeth. It's not going to come at the bottom of the teeth. It's going to remain up in the top. And they need to use the tip of their tongue as if you're saying to, 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 ta, 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 ti, ti, ti. It matters not the vowel sound. It's just you want to use that tip each time you do that. Another problem with legato or, or tonguing would be the legato for the trombonist. And we talked about this earlier with legato tonguing. But sometimes we'll blame the, the tongue when it's really the slide that's the problem. So you might be having this going on in your trombone. <laughs> That is n in no way a reflection of poor articulation. It is in a big way a reflection of a, a slide that's out of time. So remember, get your students to work on their slide timing. A metronome is an invaluable tool in this regard. Just get them to play and move their slide in time. In fact, I find that if they just watch their slide, they instantaneously become more responsible about where it fits in terms of time. So don't necessarily think that is a tonguing problem. Look at how the slide's moving in relationship to the time that you're indicating to your class and make the, the articulation change based upon the slide technique. Same thing's true of your valve players. If it looks like the valves are not synchronizing with the time that you have out there, encourage faster or in-time valve action too. Really important. Because what will happen is if you get on a tangent of it being about their tongue, you might, ultimately need, you might ultimately take what's a good articulation and turn it into a bad one trying to solve a problem that's completely unrelated to articulation. So be a careful observer when it comes to the articulation. Decide right away that, oh, slide technique and valve technique looks great. So it must be the tongue. So I want to identify um, how they need to place that tongue in their mouth. Last articulation area I want to want to deal with is is the too little uh, tonguer, and these are students who will use no tongue at the starts of notes. They basically will use their throat and grunt the note out. 
Easy problem to solve. Just reintroduce how to say ta. Get them to sing the note you want to play. Get them to sing that note while uh, using ta. So ta, then ta, and just reiterate that, look, your air comes out of your body. Your tongue is just a device to show a clear front to that note. Your throat is in no way involved in that. And you can solve that problem that way. There'll be some students who start the note great, and then instantly the tonguing will break down. And that's because they're almost afraid to over-articulate. So I think exercises that work great for that are taking your entire band, if you like, and just have them work. Let's say the rhythm you want to work on goes one and a two e and a two. Let's see, one and a two e and a three. Get get them to articulate that exercise using just air. So, stuff like that will help them sort of identify. Okay, I don't have to worry about playing notes now. All I have to do is work on how to make this um, tonguing sound it'll get the problem solved in a, a little bit more organic fashion rather than you having to go in there and say, now put your tongue here or place your tongue there or articulate this way. Just get them to work on rhythms and things like that, just blowing air. Then go back to the instruments and see if the problem is solved. I think that's a great and easy way to sort of um, solve the problems of the under articulator because they're obviously not going to go <laughs> and if they do, you'll immediately recognize it and you'll be able to address how to use the tongue again.